I go now to the second tutorial, which basically continues with this same data set because we are not there yet. There are some layers in the wrong projection. We haven't clipped the data uh, to uh, Malawi and we also want a study area. So we need to define a study area. So this is the, the tutorial, uh, just drag it here to uh, process groundwater data. So we're gonna do that one. And I'll show you that in QGIS. So let's go to the first uh, step. Well, if you use this tutorial, your first step is to check a video on the theory of vector uh, geoprocessing. That's quite useful because we use a lot of these tools in this uh, second tutorial. But the first thing that we are going to do is uh, take this uh, geo package uh, with all these layers in it um, and then going to reproject the layers that are in the wrong projection. And that's the geology and the hydrogeology layers are still in WGS84. So if I hover my mouse on it, you will see that it's 4326. And that one is the same file, uh, same layer, basically, but differently slide, uh, styled. So uh, I can just uh, export it. Save features as. And I'm going to save it to our geo package because we have a geo package now. Browse to the geo package. And I'm going to call this one geology UTM. And I change here the projection to the one of the project, which is the UTM one. And then I click OK. And now it uh, added the layer, Malawi GIS data, that's the name of the geo package, and then geology UTM, that's the name of the layer. If I put my mouse on it, then you will see there the projection and that it links to the geo package. So that's correct. Now I can copy the style. That's a nice trick. Click right on the geology layer, styles, copy style, all style categories. And I click right on Malawi, GIS, geology, UTM. I go to styles, paste styles, all categories, and it takes the same colors then as geology. And I can simply now remove the geology layer. And I can repeat this to have also the hydrogeology in uh, a geo package. Um, so there are two ways I can duplicate or I can export it, but uh, let's in this case just export it so you can see it again. It's a bit of duplication of the data, but it uh, doesn't matter, it's not that big. So go here to export, save features as. Geo, geo package, choose the geo package that we have, and we're going to store here the layer um, hydrogeology UTM. Don't forget to change the projection to that of the project to make it UTM. Click OK. And now this one is also copied to a geo package layer with the correct projection. Then I copy the styles um, here and I paste it here. There it is. And then I can remove this layer, click right and remove. Removing layers is not deleting it from the disk or from your geo package, it's simply removing it from the layers list. There it is, we have reprojected uh, these two layers. Let's see if there are more. No, that's okay for now. Then we are going to define a study area. So let me, let me just double check. This one is correct, no one is correct. Aquifers are correct. Yeah, they're all in the correct projection. So I can just save the project in the meantime to the geo package. And then we go to chapter number four of the tutorial that is to define the study area. And we want the study area to be um, an aquifer in Malawi. And we want to buffer to uh, take care of the boundary effects. And we only want the part that is in Malawi and not the part that's outside. So these are a few conditions that we need to uh, process in, uh, in this tutorial. 
So let's look at this uh, nice transboundary aquifers data set that we got from uh, SADC GIP. And that uh, now is in our, um, our database, our geo package. And let's open that attribute table. And here we see all the names of the aquifers. Now I'm looking for a specific aquifer that is called the Shire Valley Alluvial Aquifer. And I can use this button here to select features using an expression. And then I can choose here fields and values. This gives me access to the different fields in the attribute table. And here's the aquifer name column text file so this gives that it's text for the FID it's in uh, uh, integer values etc now here I can click on all unique that gives me all the unique entries in the aquifer name database uh, field and here I can look for the Shire Valley alluvial aquifer and I'm going to build an expression here to select from the aquifer name. So I double click and it comes here with double quotes. And I want it to be equal to Shire Valley aquifer. So that's a way you can compose your expressions to select. And then I choose here, select features. And then I do close. And I can also close the attribute table. Well, you can also show selected features in the attribute table. And then you see that that one is selected. Go back to all. And you see in QGIS, it will make the selection yellow. So this is the selected aquifer that is part of our study area, but we only want the part in Malawi and we only want, we also want a buffer around it. But still this selection is part of the bigger worldwide aquifer file. So what we are going to do is to export the selected feature. So I'm going to click right and use this export function again. And I'm going to use here now, save selected features as. Geo package, I want everything together in our nice geo package where all the data will end up. Click save. And this one, let me stick to the names of the tutorial. We are now in step uh, 4.2. And let's call this Shire. Oops, I have to activate this. Shire Valley Alluvial Aquifer. You notice maybe that I'm not using underscores here. It's, uh, it's wise to always use underscores, but for this is not a file folder name. This is a name of a table in a database. So here you are allowed to use any character that you want to use. So just to demonstrate that it works, uh, you can do that here. You see that this box is now automatically checked, save only the selected features. We see the projection is correct. So I can proceed with this. And now it has created this new layer, Data Shire Valley Alluvial Aquifer. I see this little question mark here. If that happens, that is a little bug in some versions. And when I made the tutorial and did the trial, it wasn't happening, but now it's happening. But if this happens to you, keep an eye on it, click on the question mark and assign the correct uh, projection here and click OK. So that's how you solve that little issue. Uh, then you're sure that you're using the correct projection. Um, I can copy the style. And I can remove the worldwide data set because we don't need that anymore. And we end up with this aquifer data set. Just to make it clear to you, there it is. And it only has one feature, Shire Valley Aquifer. The next step is to create a buffer to deal with uh, boundary effects. And you can find the buffer functions under vector, geoprocessing tools, and then buffer. Make sure that you choose the correct input layer. Here it's correct. And what we are going to use, let me use the same as in the uh, tutorial, is uh, we're going to use a 10 kilometers buffer. 
So therefore your projection need to be in UTM because that uses meters and that's more accurate than using it in latitude longitude. And then your distance can be defined here, 10 kilometers. Just as an example, you can use anything that you're used to use in your studies. And then I'm going to save it. I browse to the geo package. Save the file. And the pop-up will ask for a layer name. I'm going to call this Shire buffer 10 kilometers. Click OK. And then I'm going to run it. And then I can close it. And now you see the buffer. So if I put this one on top, you see the original. And now you see the 10 kilometer buffer around uh, the vector file. So that's great. Uh, but that's not really what we want. We also want just the part that's covering Malawi, which is a big country, as you see. So the next step is to get the buffer that is only covering Malawi. So we're going to create a country boundary. We can, of course, download it from all kinds of data sets. But here, in this case, it is more accurate to use the country boundary from the geology and hydrogeology uh, data set, because then it has a better match with our data. Otherwise, you might get slivers that you've learned about, uh, because the boundaries might be too rough or finer than uh, the ones that we use for geology. So what we can do is use this geology uh, layer and dissolve it, that all the features are then into one feature which covers the boundary of, of uh, Malawi. So that's a function here under vector geoprocessing tools, and it's called dissolve. And I use here as an input layer the geology. You can also use the hydrogeology, of course. It's the same. And I don't change the dissolve fields. Normally, you dissolve certain classes. Uh, if features have the same name of a certain class, then you can dissolve it and treat it as one feature. And I'm going to create the output, of course, again, in our geo package. So we have everything together. And I'm going to save this one as Malawi country boundary. Click OK, goes to the geo package and I run it. Then it's dissolved. And now you see that the whole country has one color. So that is the boundary of uh, Malawi. But then on top of that, we can still see our buffer. So the next step is that we intersect our buffer with the country. We cannot simply clip it. We really need to uh, use a function that is called intersect. Because if we clip it, we also get the parts that are outside of uh, Malawi or outside of the, uh, the buffered area. So let's do the next step. There's the uh, intersect function here under vector geoprocessing tools intersection. And in that little video at the start of the tutorial, you can find the definitions in a visual way of all these different tools that you have here. Here we choose intersection. That is to maintain the data that is an intersection of two uh, layers. Um, here you see the main the same problem as we had before. So we're going to fix it first. So Malawi country boundary here has an unknown projection, which is a little bug. Just point to the correct projection, do OK. And uh, now it's solved. So I go back, vector geoprocessing tools, intersection. And uh, there, as an input layer, I'm going to choose um, the Shire buffer that we just created, the 10 kilometer buffer. And as an overlay layer, I choose the country boundary. I'm not going to change anything here because that's not necessary here. And I'm going to save the intersection. And I'm going to save it again to the geo package. And that's in our tutorial one folder. And there I'm going to give it the name. Let's see. That's already our, our final study area, Shire. Uh, let's see how I called it there, just st Shire study area. So there it is, and I run it. 
close and now you see here you see uh, the, um, the original aquifer here you see Malawi then we had our buffer and now we have the study area I'm also going to solve this uh, question mark here it might that you don't have it I don't know it's a bit irregular when it shows it up but simply correct it uh, by choosing the correct projection and click OK so there it is in Orange, in this case, is the, the boundary. Now we need to clip the other layers to this uh, study area boundary. That's the next step. So we'll first do that again for the geology uh, layer. And there we can use the clip function. So I use vector geoprocessing tools clip and I'm going there to clip the geology, this one, with the overlay layer, the study area. Note that these projections in brackets need to be the same. If that's not the case, the best practice is to correct it. Some tools automatically reproject to something that will work, but I would not rely on that. So make sure that you always verify here that with overlays, uh, vector processing, and use multiple layers that they are in the same projection and preferred, of course, the one that you want to use in the end. And I go to clipped, save it to a geo package. I'm going to save this one as Shire Geology. Click OK. I run it. Click close. And I'm going to copy the styles. There it is. And you see that now we have the geology only in the study area. Now I'm going to repeat that for the other layers. So let's do the Hydrogeology in the same way, vector, geoprocessing tools, clip. You see here that uh, the geology has the wrong uh, projection again, so I'm, or unknown projection, so I'm going to set it first. Okay, also save the project in the meantime, good practice to do that uh, often. I'm going to repeat this, clip. And the input layer is the hydrogeology UTM layer because we want to clip it now to the study area and save it to our geo package. And there we call it Shire Hydrogeology. I chose here to have all the Shire uh, study area layers starting with Shire as a name to easily find it. Uh, and we see that we have Malawi for all the Malawi layers. So that keeps them a bit separated. Later, we'll save it in a dedicated um, project. So we don't get confused. So I run this, I close, change the projection here and copy the style. There it is. And now we can uh, remove the geology and the hydrogeology that we had before. And we see that we have the hydrology and the geology clipped to the study area. But we still have our monitoring wells and we still have the Ramsar sites. So let's also clip those and store them into the geo package. Same way, vector geoprocessing tools clip. So you can see you can use this for points, lines, and polygons. That doesn't matter. But you can't use this for rasters. That, that will come in another um, tutorial. So let's use now the uh, groundwater monitoring wells and we clip it to the study area and we save it to the geo package. 
and then we call it Shire Groundwater Monitoring Wells. And then we run it. Okay. Verify the projection. And we can move it to the top. We can copy the style. And we can remove the other one. If you hover your mouse over it, you can be sure that you remove the correct one. So this one is called uh, is it, uh, the groundwater monitoring wells. That's the, the wrong one. So we remove it and we keep the Shire one. And we're going to do the same for the Ramsar sites. Vector, geoprocessing tools, clip. Ramsar sites, Malawi. And then we use the study area, save to geo package. And then we create the output, Shire, Ramsar, sites and then we run it close it change the projection and copy the style and we can remove the other one and then we end up with one Ramsar site, three boreholes, the geology and the hydrogeology of our study area. And we're going to remove the layers that we don't need anymore. So we only have the layers that we uh, use in uh, our groundwater project here. So we don't need this one anymore. Also don't need the buffer. and I don't need a country boundary. So now it's uh, nicely cleaned up and uh, I can save now this whole project into the same uh, geo package. So I'm going to project, save to geo package, connect to our existing geo package, but I'm going to save it as a new project I'm going to save it as Shire Groundwater to distinguish from the other one which had the Malawi data. So I can still use both and uh, simply go to this project in the database to get all our Shire study area data in our QGIS project. Click OK. And uh, now it's uh, saved. There's still uh, one thing that we need to do. Um, as, an, as an extra for preparation here. It will be also repeated in, uh, in the last, or yeah, I think one of the last tutorials. Uh, we're going to add the geology and hydro, hydrogeology attributes to our groundwater monitoring well uh, attribute table. I'm gonna show you how to do that for uh, point layers. Therefore, we need to install a plugin, which is the point sampling tool. So plugins can be installed here from the plugins menu. You go to manage and install plugins. You need an internet connection and it will pop up with this uh, window. And here you can use uh, the search box to use the plugins under all. And I want the point sampling tool, this one. I click on it, you can read the description who, who made it and what it does. And you will find many useful plugins there. And then I install the plugin, takes it from the internet, I click close, and it will add this button here to your uh, toolbar. So I'm going to use that to sample on these boreholes, the geology and the uh, uh, hydrogeology. So I click the button. And in this uh, window, you can see here Shire Ramsar sites. That's not the correct one. We want the Shire groundwater monitoring wells. That's what we want to add it to. And 
here you need to select which fields you want to add to the new layer that will be created. And we also want all the existing fields. So I select with shift all the shower groundwater monitoring wells, wells fields, so they remain there. And then I'm going to, with control, uh, select the uh, hydrogeology. Well, you know that these layers are in fact the same, so you can select both fields, hydrogeology and geology, from one of those. But here I'll just get them from the different ones. So from hydrogeology, I choose this one. And for geology, I choose this one. And I can give it an output name here. I go to browse. You can save it as a geo package, but here it will not add anything to an existing one. That's a limitation of this tool. So better to save it as a shape file so we can later add it to the geo package because it will make a copy. So go to the tutorials one folder. And I just choose a new shape file name there. And let me see what I chose. And we call this one uh, the Wells Hydrology Geology. Wells Hydro Geology shapefile. Now there's also this field step that you can look at before, uh, pushing the OK button. Here you can rename the fields of the output layer. So on the left side, you see the name of the layer and the name of the field after the column how it's uh, called. And here you can uh, change this, for example, into uh, hydrogeology or geology. Here we are not going to do it. We keep it as uh, default. So I can click OK and it will perform it. I click Close and there it is. It's a copy and I can open the attribute table and check it. There I see that it has all the fields of the original groundwater monitoring well file. And it has the hydrogeology and the geology now added to it, sampled from the polygons, because these are polygons and we add it by sampling with the point sampling tool to the points. Now there's only one problem here. Um, that yeah, I'm, I'm creating a lot of files and this one is already in our geo database, in our geo package. And I want, in fact, this information with the geology and hydrogeology added to the existing one instead of creating yet another layer in our geo database. So what I'm going to do is, uh, of course, you can, in the browser panel, drag this to the geo package that we have, and then it will be entered as an extra layer. But I'm going to show you another method where we are going to uh, join the layers. So I want to join the new layers to the existing monitoring wells layer. So you do that by clicking right on the layer, going to properties, and then choose joins. Then you click the plus button, and then we choose the join layer. So we have the properties of the groundwater monitoring wells, and we want to join the well hydrogeology shapefile layer. And what they have in common, both are many fields because we kept those, but we are going to use the number field as the common field on, based on which we are going to join uh, these tables. Now, what I also want is to select the join fields because we don't want to copy again of all these fields. We only want to join the hydrogeology and the geology uh, field. And I want to not to have this prefix, it's too long. So I'm just going to remove it so we don't get any prefix. And then I click OK. And then here, if you expand this, you will see the summary. And uh, when I click OK, the join is performed. I go back here to the attribute table of the groundwater monitoring wells. So I see all the input fields and I see here the hydrology and uh, hydrogeology field. And they are um, now in a, in a join, which means unfortunately that if I remove this layer here, 
that the joints will be gone. So I will lose those uh, fields. So I need to make a copy first and then I can remove the shapefile safely. So remember with joints, you don't get the data copied into the layer, but you get a virtual connection in memory with the layer that you join. And uh, that's a problem because I want all the data in our uh, geo package. So what I'm going to do is uh, to make a copy and you can do it by using uh, the field calculator. First, I'm going to switch to editing mode and go to the field calculator. And I'm going to create a new field that's uh, by default checked. And I call this one geology. The field is a text field. Keep the other things as default. And I'm going to look up here in fields and values, the geology field. And that's this one, GLG. When I double click, it will put in double quotes here which simply means use the values for each feature from that uh, field. So basically it will create a copy and I do okay. And what you see now is that we have the geology copied. I repeat this for the hydrogeology, go to the field calculator, name it hydrogeology. It's a text go to fields and values, double click on this one. So we create a copy, do okay. Now we have the hydrogeology there. Toggle off the editing, click save. So look at uh, this table. It has now the copies. I close this and I'm gonna remove the shape file. I'm going to reopen the monitoring wells. And now you see that the join from the shapefile is destroyed because it's removed, but we still preserve the copy and it's in our database. So we can simply save our geo package uh, project. And uh, that's basically uh, the whole thing that I wanted to uh, demonstrate. So now you have uh, a geo package of the whole project that you can use in this virtual project on uh, groundwater mapping.